And the topic for today is reflecting back on the longer podcast episode that was published, Biology of Trauma podcast episode 125 with Dr. Sue Carter. And what she said in that longer episode is oxytocin is nature's fire extinguisher. And it perfectly captures something that I want you to understand about the biology behind the healing journey. I received a question from uh, Sarah on LinkedIn. She's a therapist in Pennsylvania. And she wrote, Dr. Amy, if you're listening to your episode with Dr. Sue Carter, I'm wondering if oxytocin is so healing, why do some of my trauma clients seem to get more anxious during mindfulness practices that are supposed to be calming? Sarah, what a great question. And it gets to the heart of this podcast episode. And I will drop the link to the longer podcast episode in the comments, because I want you to go back and listen to it if you have not yet. If oxytocin is so healing, why do some clients get more anxious? And we talked about the dance between oxytocin and its partner hormone, vasopressin. And so Sarah, your observation about clients getting more anxious during practices that should be calming and why. There is a biology behind it, and it's a biology that we can learn to work with, and that's why I wanted to do this miniature episode to give you those action steps that you can take. So I encourage you to go back to that full episode with Dr. Sue Carter and listen to that episode. In fact, let me um, show you that if you're on YouTube, watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see that I am sharing my screen and showing you the podcast episode and where you can find this week's episode on 125, episode 125. The biology behind this oxytocin and vasopressin. So what she said was that the oxytocin and vasopressin are not necessarily competing hormones, they're dance partners. Now, you may not be familiar with any of these hormones because they're not talked about very much. And they need to be. They need to be at the center of our conversation around stress, around trauma, around the healing journey. So oxytocin and vasopressin. These are two hormones in the body that are involved with the stress response and our ability to feel safe. When we do not feel safe, then we will have more of the stress hormones. And you may be more familiar with cortisol, but we actually need to bring oxytocin into the conversation and this idea of oxytocin and vasopressin partnership. They're not necessarily in competition. They are dance partners and they are like tuning forks. And so they move us in and out of different states. They help us shift between emotional states, which as you've listened to my podcast here, you will know that I'm referring to the state of the nervous system. This is not just emotional. This is the nervous system state that we're talking about. And oxytocin is the calm, connected hormone. It's the safety hormone. And vasopressin is a stress hormone, but it's not one that we always need to avoid. In fact, Dr. Sue Carter mentioned that vasopressin is the one that gets very little attention and yet plays such a critical role, not just cortisol. Vasopressin is what puts us into a state that is what we need to manage sudden change in fear. So it's a mobilizing hormone. It activates our energy. And it, rather than taking us into a place of being easy and relaxed and restoring us, because that's what the oxytocin does. So here's the crucial point. And Sarah, this will be important for you as I'm answering your question. You need both hormones. You need both hormones for what Dr. Sue Carter called the peak experiences. Peak experiences are these experiences that will be centered and anchored into our memory because they had the right internal chemistry to make a difference and an impact on this is important and we need to remember this. So oxytocin and vasopressin act together, not necessarily just in competition, but vasopressin is a key stress hormone. In fact, vasopressin is what we're saying is a key stress hormone, perhaps even more important than cortisol in the ability for us to make sudden 
changes when we are faced with fear. So I want you to stop and pause for a moment. When was a time, perhaps earlier today or this last week, where you felt sudden fear? There was something that happened that created an instant sense of fear. That was vasopressin inside of your biology running through your bloodstream to create that effect. So the vasopressin is what we want to consider as the immediate uh, response that allows us to create a change, a reaction, a response to immediate fear. And with oxytocin, that will be balancing then this idea of how are we adapting? How are we responding? How are we changing? And so the, the oxytocin is the magical hormone that allows us to react from a place of, I am acting from my true self. It's not, I'm able to balance that fear with my resources, with my sense of, I, I can take action, I feel capable. And when people are in that state of threat, oxytocin can help them stay more regulated and have that flexible adaptation response that we want. Now, what gets difficult for some people is that when they have a trauma history, their hormone imbalance has already been established oftentimes since early childhood. And we know that all of their hormones get imbalanced as a result of trauma histories. Yes, adrenaline and cortisol, but also the oxytocin and the vasopressin. So how do we then, how do we help the hormones come back to a place of balance, especially when uh, they, these people have their danger colored glasses on and they see threat everywhere and they're not going to be getting the oxytocin that regular safety cues would be giving them. So Sarah, this is where your clients, you mentioned that they get anxious during mindfulness practices. Their nervous system might be interpreting the quiet as a danger. Their nervous system might be interpreting the internal focus as a threat. They, they may be experiencing even just the connection with their body as dangerous because when people have been in trauma, they tend to survive better when they're analyzing everything, when they're on guard, when they always have this um, kind of their, their senses on and alert for looking for danger. So it's not always feeling safe to let our guard down. It's not always feeling safe to trust others, to connect with others. And yet these are the times in which we would normally get oxytocin. So in this conversation with oxytocin and vasopressin, I want to highlight the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is where a lot of these hormones are regulated. And that is why we need to bring it into the conversation as we're talking about both the impact of trauma on the body, on the mind, because in the hypothalamus, this is where these hormones are made. The hypothalamus is in the limbic area of the brain, meaning these are um, the instinctual responses that are beyond our logical control. You can't think and have oxytocin created. It's a felt sense of your limbic system as it assesses whether it believes and feels that you are safe. And so it's linking the top down and bottom up information so that it's the command center that then regulates the whole nervous system. And that is why it releases oxytocin and vasopressin as a way to command and direct the whole body and what the body will do in that moment. The hypothalamus is in the key location to be able to do that. So it's receiving information from our entire system, it's receiving information from our gut, our heart rate, our breath rate, even your blood sugar. The hypothalamus is getting information about your blood sugar and it's making split second decisions about safety and danger and acting on that through oxytocin and vasopressin. Why would this be important? Let me then now go into the practical action steps from this longer episode. Again, that's episode 125 with Dr. Sue Carter on 
the hidden hormone, the safety hormone of oxytocin and really the dance between oxytocin and vasopressin in trauma therapy and the healing journey. First of all, practical action steps. It all really needs to start with a sense of safety. Now, we know this from polyvagal theory and Dr. Sue Carter, the wife of Steve Porges, this is where those two worlds intersect, where we know the hormonal shifts that need to happen, but how do we make those happen? Those happen only through creating a felt sense of safety. And as we've already talked about with Sarah's question, not this, everything that should be safe feels safe. So we actually have to get to know the people that we're working with. We cannot just work off of a protocol and check the boxes and say, are you doing your mindfulness? Are you doing your meditation? Are you doing your yoga? Because for them, those things might not feel safe. We need to know what feels safe to them. Second, create that daily practice of attunement. Because until we can attune with our body, we won't know which state we are in. Are we in a vasopressin dominant state? Are we in an oxytocin dominant state? In order to affect change on the system, we need to be aware, where is the system? And for a lot of the people that come through my courses, they are noticing that they have never really felt safe in their body. They haven't even known what it feels like. And so knowing that my state is in stress or my state is in shutdown, is an important part of the healing journey. And so I call that attunement and allowing ourselves to be so attuned with our bodies and our inner states that we know the state we are in so that then we can affect change. In fact, in my book, I have a nervous system journal that I share, which is how I started tracking my nervous system to know what state am I in right now? Because I had been living so disconnected from my own body I didn't actually know my inner state. I just, as I don't like it, it feels anxious. I don't want to feel my body. So let me keep working. Let me multitask. Let me stay busy. Let me drink caffeine. Let me do anything to not be attuned. And so that is part of that healing journey, creating safety and creating attunement with our body. And I will be sharing that nervous system journal for those who order my book and I'll have that information in my book. We do want to support our hypothalamus though with simple interventions. What about your blood sugar? I'm gonna be asking you about your blood sugar as you are going into trauma therapy or personal development or any change that you wanna affect in your life because if your blood sugar is triggering your hypothalamus to sense threat, you're not going to feel safe inside and it's not going to create the change that you want. Are you skipping meals? Are you drinking caffeine without any food in your stomach? These are things that will make your blood sugar levels be unstable and unstable blood sugars are a sign of danger to your nervous system, specifically to your hypothalamus. For me, what this has looked like, this is why I now measure my sugar levels. So here I have on my arm, the continuous glucose monitor. That is my way of getting that information from my body so that I know, are my blood sugar levels stable, that I'm actually giving cues of safety to my hypothalamus. Of course, there's more to that. There's the sleep, there's our circadian rhythm, getting to natural light. There's all these other interventions, but I wanted to focus on that because that is a common one that I see in people who are trying to do good things, trying to rise above their past, trying to process things and heal, and biology is holding them back. That is why I wrote my book, The Biology of Trauma. Is the essence of that book is that this is how we stay stuck in our trauma patterns. and having reactions and responses that we don't want to be having. It's because our own biology is triggering a sense of danger. And one of those ways is this blood sugar triggers the hypothalamus and there goes our vasopressin. So the key takeaway from this episode here is that the context, the environment matters just as much as the intervention. 
Before we can access the healing benefits of oxytocin, we need to create the environment of safety for us to have the oxytocin. And so the EMDR or the yoga or the art narrative therapy, whatever intervention we're using, if we want to access the healing benefits of an intervention, we need to be looking at, do I have the hormones? Do I have this safety hormone, the oxytocin, creates the bath that allows for the healing process? Without that environment, we will stay stuck because our thalamus is getting danger signals from our own body biology. With that, you will find resources from today's episode in the show notes. I will include that link again in the comments. The show notes are where you can find the full length episode. It's an audio podcast. It's a YouTube video. So whether you like to listen or whether you like to watch, I've got you covered and I will have links to resources in the show notes. Remember, your body's responses do make sense. There is biology behind everything that we do. I'm your host, Dr. Amy. Until next episode, lots of love.